All right, I'm gonna give a prime example of music, frequency, and why I don't listen to music, and the benefits of me not listening to music is, this is from my own experience, this is from me, and what happens in my body and what happens to me. So since I made the video, the frequency one about why I don't listen to music. And then the second video I made was, are you blessed or not blessed? Is God blessing you or the devil blessing you? So right now I'm gonna talk about a question that was posed to me on both of those, those um, videos. Someone asked me like, what are the benefits that you've received for a year and a, seven months of not listening to music? And now I'm gonna tell them because there's such a big contrast that I can give two sides or like give you the benefits. Um, you know, benefit number one, let's go with more mental clarity. Benefit number two, I'm gonna say I have more presence in the world. Benefit number three, my workouts where I would use the music are very direct. Benefit number four is when I'm driving in the car, I'm way more relaxed listening to chant or binaural beats or ohm chants. So my attitude is really, really calm and present. If I listen to it before bed or any other chance that I would listen to music, it makes me more present, more grounded, more in my body, and I'm not escaping any reality. So those are just some quick benefits. Um, oh, more benefits. Number five, I would say is, I feel like I'm able to release stuff when I listen to certain vibrational frequencies. One is for like shame and guilt and emotional release. When I listen to that, I don't cry. I don't like let it rip after it. I just kind of like breathe with it and just trust that it's doing something for me and I feel cleaner, clearer. It could be all things, you know, me cleaning up my diet, not using drugs, being on semen retention, all things combined. This is very powerful stuff. Um, so you have to do all of them, I guess, but I couldn't pin it on one thing, but this is part of the process and this is helping me a lot because I'll explain why it's helping me in a minute. But as far as benefits go, I'm able to stay more present, more clear, um, and now say I'm at the mall or somewhere shopping or a supermarket, I don't hear any music. I feel very calm and grounded. Even walking the streets if I'm playing music, I just, when I'm traveling, if I like walk the town, I try and take in the sound of the neighborhood. Um, but if I'm using them I, or on an airplane, I stay really grounded, I get really present. And it really like brings my aura out that I'm so in my body and in my own zone and not worried about everything else. And I'm not like emanating energy off me because I'm at this like super high vibrational of, you know, the music really taking you over. Even if it's slower music, just the words, it's not changing or altering my mood to open me up for anything. I want to say evil or influential to really come in. It really puts me grounded in my body that nothing can really knock me off my center. Do you, do you get what I'm saying there? Um, so for instance, if I'm super centered, I'm on the airplane and the person next to me starts talking to me and I engage with them, I can stay super present. I won't gossip. I won't have an out of pocket conversation I normally wouldn't have. I keep it really, really like honest and authentic and they really appreciate that. And I'm able to connect so much deeper with people because I'm so present at all times and I've never been knocked off my frame. So now let me go to the contrast. Um, so recently everyone's been talking about the music stuff and I'm like, all right, I'm in the gym. Let me go put on some music, you know? So I put on like the house music on the treadmill. It amped me up. I was able to run harder. I was able to like pump through my workouts, but I was like constantly like looking around, seeking validation, looking for attention. Um, my energy was just like pumping and trying to release and I'm doing the workout and it's just ripping through me. And I don't take caffeine, so it's not a caffeine thing. 
I'm just feeling really amped from the music, you know, so that's in the gym. Then after the, you know, it just got me way out of frame. Like I, I would talk to people, I would look at people. I'm like, who's looking and doing extra workouts, trying to show off almost. I wasn't really there for me. It kind of knocked me out of my frame, all right? So then another downside of that is when I get home, I'm not in my frame. Maybe I go play on the computer, I, I search the internet, I look on Instagram way more, looking for dopamine hits, some way to release the rest of this energy that's just ripping through me. And whatever I'm listening to has that influence on me. So if it's about you know lustful stuff, I might start looking around girls or reaching out to women. I normally wouldn't do, just for attention and validation to seek that dopamine hit. Um, another thing I would do is I would turn to different foods that I normally wouldn't eat or I'd go out to dinner and order food and not stick to the plan because I'm like, oh, whatever. I'm on a cheat day, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. You know, I'm feeling good. So that's another downside. Another downside is I'm out of my present moment. So say I'm on an airplane and just hanging out or walking the streets, you know, you're moving like this and you have this certain attitude to you depending on the music. And then you might engage in conversation that you normally wouldn't engage in. Maybe you'll gossip more, maybe you'll do whatever else more, you know, just stuff that I normally wouldn't do when I'm in my center and in my power. And I find myself giving away a lot of power, a lot of attention, a lot of energy, life force, and I'm wasting it. And then that's called almost like edging or lusting for attention, not just women, but lusting. I don't fall into the PMO or go have sex or use drugs, thank God. But in the past, easily, like I've even considered using drugs during this time. And I'm like, whatever, what's one more time? What's a big deal? I made it this far, who really cares? And then I started questioning my, um, my, my choices. I'm like, okay, am I weird? Am I crazy? Everyone's doing this stuff. They listen to music, they have fun, they dance, they get on the same vibe and same wavelength. But that's not like a heart center or a true honest wavelength. You're on the wavelength of the vibration of that music. And it could be an evil vibration. It could be a distorted vibration. And you're connecting and in this space with somebody when the music blends you guys and you're just dancing and just feeling it and then things happen. That could be all manipulation from the music and expressing that's how it expresses through, through sexual energy, through maybe drug use, maybe through attitude, maybe through gossip, it expresses in different ways. Um, I'll make another video about how our body's made up of 90% water and water has memory. So when it hears these vibrations or feel these vibrations, the water cells and the cells in your body have to spin, make shapes and form different shapes. You know, like in cymatics, I don't have like the video behind me to show you guys, but if you just Google or YouTube cymatics, you'll see a vibration plate with sand on it. When they put certain frequencies on it or sounds, it forms beautiful shapes. But then when you have distorted sound, it's chaos. So imagine that happening in your body. So that's a good way to look at it. You have organization from the music, beautiful shapes, organizes your body, your mind, clarity. And then the chaos comes in and you're distorted. So now that leads me into Napoleon Hill's Outwitting the Devil, all right? I love this book, but the reason I'm gonna talk about it is because when he interviews the devil, he talks about something called drifting and hypnotic rhythm. If you read the book, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't read the book, read the book, and you'll see how the opposition, the devil, evil, whatever you wanna call it, 